decisions, great mound visits, great job not letting the best player beat you. This one crushed. Out to right field. Seventh pick of the 2023 MLB Draft, the Detroit Tigers select Kevin McGonigal, a shortstop from Monsignor Bonner High School, Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. Two balls, two strikes to Bryce Harper. Suarez delivers, swing and a drive, left field, it's deep, it's going, yes! and it is gone! Yes! yes! It is Bedlam at the bank as Bryce Harper has put the Phillies on top! Are you kidding me? Oh, his 10th career home run in the postseason! And he may never hit a bigger one! What is up, Delaware County? And welcome back for episode number 44 of Delco Baseball Now. My name is Brennan Ricciardi. I'm joined by Ben Thorpe. And Ben, we're getting real close to the season. We're only two months away here. Oh, uh, yeah. Had a little interview here earlier. Mm-hmm. That's... Uh... I don't know, like 50 degrees out today. It's starting to feel like baseball weather. Yeah, when you walk out the door and you don't immediately want to run back inside, yeah. it's pretty encouraging. The wind uh, cuts through every layer of clothes you oh, have. Like, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just glad I'm not in State College anymore. It's like 10 <laughs> degrees colder and even windier there oh God, than it was imagine. before. Um, as Ben mentioned, we got a good interview coming up. We got uh, Matt Kane, Jake McDonough, and Zane Malarkey from Strathaven Baseball. They joined the show today. Talk about their season last year where they went all the way to the state championship. Obviously, it didn't end up going the way they wanted, but still an incredible run. These guys talked about how it went last year and uh, look forward to this year. So we're excited to uh, to play that interview in a little bit. But yeah, we got some interview. we got some important things to talk about first. Most importantly, we got merchandise now. Yes, we sir. got Donnie Delco in the flesh. Uh, I guess I should say in the fabric, really. Yeah, yeah more um, of so I'm guessing by this time, I'll probably have already shared the link, but we have a store up on a website called Printify. We have stuff for everyone. We have stuff for you, your mom, your dad, your dog, really anybody that wants to rep the brand. Uh, and most importantly, to help support our writers, because, you know, in order for us to be able to keep the site going the way we want and, you know, get the photographers we want, the videographers, we just need to be able to have the money to, to pay these guys for yeah. the work that they do yeah. and, you know, keep providing the content uh so we really appreciate anybody that gets any merch we got all different colors you're a bonner guy we got kelly green you're a haverford school guy we got we got the burgundy you know we got i think we got orange the golf shirts i think there's 17 colors available so any whatever shade whatever whatever yeah whatever shade of color you uh your heart desires uh that is on the website i will put the link in the uh the youtube for that but we're looking forward to uh to getting that shop going and uh, I think I need the quarter zip. I think that. Oh uh, yeah. I think yeah. the quarter zip would be good to wear to, to games. A little more professional than Either the hoodie. Either that or the jacket. Yeah. Oh, the puffer jacket. Yeah, oh yeah, man, yeah, yeah. dude. I think the blanket for some of them cold games. The moms are gonna love the blanket. We oh, there's a there's a blanket on there. There's a blanket on there. It gets cold in Delco here. Um, uh, before we get into the interview, we got a couple of quick uh, things that we want to talk about here. We're gonna talk about the Delaware County Sports Hall of Fame. I believe it's in Radnor. I'm not 100% sure. I believe it's in Radnor. We had a couple Delco baseball guys get inducted into the Hall of Fame. So we got to start off with the coach of the guys that we're having on the show. Brian Feely has been inducted to the Hall of Fame as a head coach. As a player, he played at Upper Darby. I believe he was the Delco Times Player of the Year. He played at Villanova. But now as a coach, I mean, his resume, you know, at the age he is, is I'll put that up with anybody. You know, yeah. he's got... Uh, four Central League titles. He's got three District 1 titles. In the Delco League with Wayne, he's got six Delco League titles. And as we'll talk about in the interview, just very, very well-respected coach uh, by players, by other coaches. Also coaches the Big 26 team, which I work for, mm-hmm. uh, the Showcase, and the Carpenter Cup. Is he coaching every day of the year? It sure I, sounds like it. I mean, you had to argue at the, at least at the high school level, he's I don't know. You, you could probably make the argument of, like, best coach in Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like, you know, obviously they made the state, state title. Obviously they made the state title this year and, you know, it didn't end up going the way that they wanted. But, you know, to take that team there and that mm-hmm. group and, and the sustained – that's a that's a tongue twister – sustained success. I'm leaving that in because that, that, one, was, <laughs> that one was funny. Um, but, yeah, no, it's uh, it's cool, you know, for me. I'm, I'm 24 years old right now. I, I played for him in high school. And, you know, six years later I'm still playing for him in the summer. So – and, you know, I always, I always enjoy talking baseball with him. We'll get him on. We had him on the show when it was uh, this week in Delco League. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't know if he's been on Delco Baseball now yet. 
So he's not quite an alum. We'll get there. We'll yeah, get there. that uh, that banquet is Sunday, April 21st. I'm sure I'll make it there. Uh, next up on the list of the Hall of Fame inductees, we got Jeff Randazzo. So he just had his number retired by Cardinal O'Hara this summer. Uh, I think it was 47, I want to say. He was the Catholic MVP in baseball and basketball, which has to be an incredible feat because usually you'd think basketball MVP – you know, is someone that it, it, I mean, he's like, I think six, seven, yeah. you know? So it's like the basketball part, isn't as surprising uh, when you get him out there, six, seven pitcher, man, that's terrifying. And uh, I, th- I believe he's going in as a multi-sport athlete, okay. but a that little, makes sense. yeah. You never see people winning MVP in two sports. No, championships that. is one thing. Oh, MVPs yeah. is, MVPs is crazy is being different. the best player. Uh, he ended up not going to college. He got drafted by the Minnesota twins in the fourth round of the, t- uh, excuse me, 1999 MLB draft. Uh, he unfortunately had a bad car accident on his way to spring training in 2002, which just gave him some injuries that it looked, seemed like he just couldn't really get back to where he needed to be in terms of uh, you know trying to get to the big leagues. Made it up to Double A in 2005, but now he's got a great gig going. I mean, yeah. as as far as you know, great careers you can have in baseball outside of being a player. He is the owner of Ascent Athlete, as we've mentioned, right down the street in Garnet Valley one of the premier training facilities in the tri-state area. Mm -hmm. He's also a sports agent. Alec Manoa, Jordan Hicks, and uh, Chaz McCormick are all all clients of his. Mm -hmm. That's a, like, I knew Jordan Hicks when I didn't know that he had Manoa and McCormick as well. That's a nice nice little group of guys there. Yeah, I was reading a couple articles about him. Uh, He's definitely a guy that I think would be good to have on the show. Uh, And, you know, because there's just so many different things he can talk about. You know, he's got the player perspective. Mm -hmm. He's got the ascent. You know, like, why did you get involved in that, right? Like, and, and I think we're starting to see... A lot of people that used to play going into roles to help support players because they know what they need in order to be successful and they know like what it takes to get to that next level that he hopes to provide for, you know? Yeah, that's really good to have too, I think, just for, you know, as uh, having been a young player around here and now for like the young players now, like I think it's really good to have people that you can kind of look up to and um, have the answer. Really look up to for him. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, really look up to. Yeah, we met him. uh, Way up to. We met up when... (laughs) Uh, we went into a scent around New Year's Eve. Uh, Ch- uh, Chase Miller yeah, introduced yeah. us to him, and uh, we well, definitely would like to have him on the program. We got one more baseball inductee. I believe I'm saying this right. Uh, John Pogeny, I think is how they pronounced it. Pojani, maybe, uh, was how the inquiry. There's a quote in here. This is from the 1930s, uh, from the Chester Times. He said, to be a star in baseball, it is necessary for your name to appear quite often in print and to have fans passing it about the word of mouth. It's hard to put Pogeny in the headlines when you're not even certain as to the spelling or pronunciation. <laughs> that's messed up, man. That's a great line, though, especially back then. <laughs> yeah, no, that's... Damn. That's hysterical, yeah. <laughs> um, so, quick background. Uh, so, John won two Catholic League championships with St. James in the early 70s. He also had a long career in the Delco softball scene. And his dad, this was where the confusion was, his dad used to play for the Phillies in the 1940s and was inducted into the Hall of Fame in the, I think, the 60s. But, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, yeah, so it's going to be cool. Father-son combo yeah, in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, That's definitely. pretty cool. Uh, his dad played from the Phillies in... 1940 to 43, he played for the Pirates. He played for the the Cleveland Indians. And one thing I mentioned to you before we got on, he played for the Orioles, which were a farm system team of the Indians, <laughs> which is just funny, like reading back that now. That's nuts. 17 years in the uh, is that so? Is that like coaching coaching softball or like playing like? I'm not sure. Types of I was just going off. Shout out Dave Berman, uh, the Delco Sports Encyclopedia. Oh, yeah. I texted him like, "What do you know about this guy?" <laughs> like three articles immediately. I'm like Nailed you are it. insane. Like I don't know how. Uh, he's got a picture of everyone that's special knowledge. Yeah. People. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shout out, John. I'm sure we'll be able to, uh, I'm going to be completely honest. I have no idea if he's alive or not. I hope he is. I don't know. I should ask Dave. Uh, um, I think, I would hope let's so. see if he was in high school in the early seventies, then he'd probably be in his like sixties, maybe Yeah, like late sixties, yeah. early seventies. Yeah. Um, but I would definitely like to be at that event, have some of those guys in to talk about their, uh, their Delco baseball time. All right, well, I believe it is interview time now. So we are going to bring in our Strathaven guys. We're going to let them talk about their season and uh, what to look forward to in 2024. All right, we are now joined by the reigning Central League champs, District 1 champs, and state runner-ups, our guys from Strathaven Baseball. We got Jake McDonough, Matt Kane, and Zane Malarkey. Gentlemen, welcome to the studio. Thanks for coming on. How are we doing? Thanks. Yeah, great. Thanks for having us. Of course, of course. Now, obviously, great season for you guys. Last year, we're about... Two-ish months, probably from opening day, right? How's the off season been for you guys? It's been going great. We've uh, been doing our 7:30 a.m. workouts at a Bell Ringers facility. Um, yeah, it's been great. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, we normally train like probably six, five to six days a week. We're pretty much all our team is over at a Sun Athlete, yeah. like literally right down thirty the road, seconds down the road from here. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So we're there pretty much afternoon, probably like three to seven ish, and then as Jake said, we got our Saturday morning, so definitely early, but um, they're fun for sure. So yeah, definitely everybody's bought in to you know training, getting better for the season. So a sense helps us helped us a lot, and um, so is Bell Ringer seven thirty. I don't. I team. don't miss those Saturday morning <laughs> practice. It, it's 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 fun, you know. Just especially when you're so far away from the year to kind of like see yeah. the team forming. Yeah. But feel if you're listening to this, maybe maybe eight thirty, <laughs> maybe nine thirty <laughs> next time. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Sometimes there's seven thirty ones. So get you ready for college. I know we had like five thirty. Yeah. So not not for club. Club. We actually practiced ten p.m. to midnight uh, sometimes <laughs> last year because in state college there's so few indoor facilities that everybody's wow. fighting for yeah that since we're the college kids they're like oh you guys are up that late anyway <laughs> yeah it's like yeah but like <laughs> i want to be playing baseball at midnight you know <laughs> yeah i think alex said they have some practices at like eight o'clock right yeah now. that's like for yeah. the real team too obviously. shout out alex walking on the yeah. varsity yeah, team awesome. we'll, we'll yeah. talk about him in yeah. a little bit here um but i know he had tried out for the club team it was kind of like that was kind of like his safety net like if yeah. i don't make the varsity we'll stick with the club Definitely. team but yeah. you know uh it's so cool that's yeah so it's cool. awesome yeah um, all right, so you guys have had a little bit of time practicing together. Um, obviously, some new additions. Is there anyone that you know you can tell us about that might benefit you guys this year? Yeah. Um, you know, it's really early in the off season. We still have two months to go, but there's definitely a lot of young kids who um, have bought into the program and saw their success, and you know, want to fill fill some roles. We have three key guys leaving us, so um nobody in particular yet but we definitely have a few young guys that are looking to fill some roles yeah awesome. i mean it's definitely early but i would say i think i think we have a really good freshman class too so a couple years down the road i think yeah. we'll still you know we should have a, a pretty strong program for a couple years and definitely some of the younger sophomore guys are gonna gonna help us out too so yeah it should be should be a good time yeah as you mentioned obviously some of the big guys leaving alex pock sam milligan were kind of like the two you know main captains of the squad that uh that departed. What can you say about just what they were able to bring both on and off the field just for their time at the program? Uh, I'll say Sam especially was a great leader. And I mean, he's just naturally born leader, right? Like he was football team captain, wrestling, baseball. He just, he was a great leader. Same with Pac. Like Pac was more of a quiet leader, but yep. they're both great leaders. Yeah, yeah um, definitely. You know, they would just be very vocal with us, you know, be honest. Like, if we're having a bad practice, you know, they'll let us know, and that's what leaders should do. Um, they expect the best out of us, and that's what we're looking to do this year, you know, carry that on and, you know, make the team as successful as possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Both D1 athletes right yeah, there. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, so I guess you kind of talked about a little bit at the end there. Um, you guys are now kind of the ones stepping into that leadership yeah. role. How are you all feeling about taking on that responsibility? Um, it's definitely, like, going to be – uh, transition from I, me personally, I was more just like a role player, but like I've really like gotten to know the younger kids, and it's nice to like be able to show them how things are done, especially at Strathaven Baseball. Yeah, I mean, personally, I can't wait, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I think, um, just kind of even like little things like leading stretches and breaking down practices and stuff will be fun, but um, I really I don't think it'll be like too hard. I mean, I think we really have like some of the best team chemistry, I definitely think. That showed last year. I don't think um, either of these guys would say that we had the most talent, but I definitely think we're we're very well bonded. So I think just kind of keeping that chemistry together, it shouldn't be a problem to kind of step up. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, kind of like they said, you know, just being leaders, you know, avoiding the little drama things that you know can happen with sports teams because we're all we're all great friends, the entire team, and that's you know one was one of the key to our successes last year. Um, just staying together and you know pitch by pitch, play by play, yep. just trying to win. Definitely. So last year, most successful year the program's had. First States win, obviously got all the way to the championship. What did it mean just to be a part of that? Like when people, you know, walk into Strathaven and see those banners up, like realizing that 2023 is on all of them. I mean, it's it's awesome, like being able to just be remembered as that team. But like it really just like we were um, – we wanted to play to the standard because – the years before us, so like 2021, they went pretty far. 2022, like we went far again. But like we wanted to be the team that got even further. And I think we did that this yeah, year. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was definitely amazing. I think prize being for the three of us, those were the funnest baseball games we've ever yeah. played in. I mean, uh, really just playing like big time games. And obviously we had some good success throughout the run. It was just really pretty amazing. It's something that we definitely won't be able to fulfill. But hopefully we can kind of, you know, finish the job this year and get all the way there. Yeah. Now, I think the biggest part, like the best – Part of those playoffs was just, you know, the simple things. It was like um, 
being on the buses with yeah, the guys, definitely. going out to oh, eat. Yeah. It wasn't really the games in particular. It was just the extra moments that we got to spend with the team and just, you know, they're they're priceless. Yeah, yeah so. and especially just, like, a tiny thing, but just, like, getting to practice for an extra month, like, yeah. being out there oh, every yeah. single day, like, Friday cutoff days, blasting the music and just, you know, swinging the bat and feeling ground balls with the team is, like, just great memories that you kind of yeah. won't be able to replace. So all that together, I feel like. So I never got to experience this because when I made the playoff senior, we were the 13th seed, but you guys got to play a bunch of home playoff games in front yeah. of all the fans. And, man, Strath even packs out for these playoff games yeah. all in right field. We used to do, when I just graduated high school, we'd, like, come back and watch, and we'd be cooking, like, burgers and dogs yeah. in the outfield and just chirping the left fielder. But games there, it seems like it's a lot of fun to play there. So what's it like having – for better or worse, most of the school come out to these yeah. games, you know? Oh, it's it's electric is just the easiest way to describe it. Like, yeah. I mean, there, our student section especially is very loud and uh, sometimes a little out of control. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> they, uh, they, they're, it's a lot of fun to have them at the games and get to, like, see, it, it definitely brings a lot yeah. more energy to the team. Yeah, I mean, we definitely feed off that energy. I think our freshman year, I know you got called up for playoffs, but uh, Jake and I were definitely there for when the team played Marple. Uh, what I want to say was the district semis, I think, and it was during the school day, but, like, literally the oh, whole entire so school fun. was there, and it was just, it was so cool. It was such a cool environment, so being able to kind of be the ones on the field for that, yeah. um, Last year was was pretty. I was the day when they honored the uh, the Springfield kid who was battling yeah. cancer, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was yeah, at that yeah, game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty awesome. No, yeah, but like they said, it's just like it can turn the tide so easy. Yeah. You know, when you have all the fans cheering for you, you know, one big play happens, you get the energy yeah. back, and it kind of just really helps you yeah, out a lot. Definitely. So. And this is a really small thing, but they did like a roll call this year, which was really cool. I didn't notice that. They went around. Yeah, the field. I didn't yeah. Actually, I was I was never at the district games because okay, I was still yeah. the World no, Series. I, you I were at some right? I was yeah. behind the home plate. Yeah. So I didn't hear that. Which ones? Um, you were at Ruston? Yeah, yeah right? I was at the Phoenixville, Ruston. Okay, yeah. And um, the championship. It was... Upper double? Yeah, upper double. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I didn't get to make a game until that first States game. Oh, I don't, yeah, I don't think. Yeah. yeah, that was fun. That I was, was hoping fun. I didn't bring, like, the vibe. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, if they lose, they're going to kill me because that's, like, the first game. Because <laughs> yeah. the one – I was at the regular season game when you lost to Ridley. Oh, I was yeah, talking to you after the game. I'm like, yeah, I can't yeah. come to any games yeah. anymore because yes. I think you guys at the time were undefeated. Yeah, that was a big turning point, yeah. though, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That obviously sucked in the moment to get smoked 10 out on our home field. That was the most people we had in the game. We were 5-0 and at the time. But I think it was kind of a good, like – just something for us to feel a little bit, kind of get the feeling of a loss, and also yeah, just yeah. kind of like yeah. really see where we are. I don't think we were, we weren't playing great baseball at the time; we we're just kind of sneaking by wins. So the so. Eagles early season, uh, yeah, you know, exactly. it's like you were winning, exactly. but you're like, this isn't gonna yeah, carry exactly. over. Yeah, so yeah. I think that in the long run, actually helped the season. Yeah. That was tough. So. That was definitely a wake up call for us. Yeah, because exactly. I feel like you know we started off five and zero. We thought we were you know just that team, yeah. and that loss really woke us up and told us you know it's baseball. And we have to play every single yeah. game, every single inning. So. And definitely, yeah. Got to put a little more focus into practice, work a little harder, and um, I definitely think it helps. So, yeah. yeah, definitely told us we couldn't, like, cruise to the playoffs and anything. Yeah. We had to definitely had to focus on the games in front of us and even just the at-bats in front of us. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess kind of taking that in, um, what do you guys think you guys – or what do you think you guys have to do to get back to that same stage of the season? I think just it comes down to uh, – winning baseball is pitching. So, like, we – Lost yeah. Alex Pock, so we got a big uh, void to fill with his innings and his play. We just got to – pitching is going to have to really step up this year, which I think we can do. Yeah. yeah. No, um, you know, Coach Feely always stresses us. I mean, he probably did to you, Brendan, too. Pitching and defense will win. <laughs> yep. Um, and that's kind of what, you know, we've done the past couple of years. We had Alex Pock and Luke last year, who, and obviously Zane, too, out of the reliever spot, who helped shut us down. Um, but, yeah, pitching, you know, stepping up, throwing strikes – keeping the fielders in focus and um, you know, not walking guys because when we walk guys that, you know, yep. disengages the fielders and doesn't lead to good things. Yeah, and I think just playing our game too. Like if we play seven innings of strategy baseball, we're going to be in every single game. Mm -hmm. So um, honestly just like not trying to do too much and just kind of sticking to our game plan. We always – our coaches always have us like super, super well prepared. We, we know everything and how we want to attack the game. So I'd say just kind of sticking to our game, playing our game, and, you know, we'll be in it. Yeah. So just need that big hit. Yeah, well, big all right, hit. so I guess I actually have this question on here a little bit later, but yeah. when, when you hear Strathaven baseball, yeah. what comes to mind? Because I have my, you know, answers as well, but like what does that mean to you? The, Str the Strathaven brand. I just think, like, you know, grit and determination. Um, yeah. You know, a lot yep. of the times we don't get <clears throat> the same amount of talent as people in the other areas, but I think that we come together, we play baseball the right way, we play, you know, we bunt guys over, we'll do safety squeezes, suicide squeezes, whatever it needs to be done. Um, 
And I just think that we really rely on pitching. And a lot of teams, you know, they try to beat us with the bats, but there's some days where bats won't work and pitching pitching just stays. So Yeah, Kater, I think you took the word right out of my mouth. I was going to say gritty, too, yeah. um, and just kind of doing all the little things. Obviously, we stress pitching defense is the biggest thing, but uh, we, we, do, we bunt a lot. A lot of times, kind of until the team, you know, is going to field it and stop us. But we're bunting a lot of guys over, just kind of playing small ball and really just doing whatever we, we yeah. have to the win. Yeah, my senior year, we played Herod in the first round, and I think yeah. we bonded four straight yeah. batters. Uh-huh. And they, I don't think they record a single out. Yeah, this year, yeah. yeah. Did against seven. Marple, did we bond three yeah. or four times in a Actually, row? Actually, I remember that. I remember, that. <laughs> I remember uh, writing the game yeah. article. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Philly. Yeah. Like. I think that was the first game of the year, yeah. right? That was the first time we no, played? No, or was no, the second, second time. Okay, yeah. But I think we bonded at least three, if not four times in a row. Until he got if you can't bunt, way. Philly won't start you. Like Absolutely no matter not. what position yep. or wherever you are in the order. Like I learned that very quickly because like I was, you know, grew up a little on the heavier side. I wasn't really much of a bunter. Yeah. I was more of like a <laughs> just free swinging. And I I found out very quickly if you can't get the bunt down or you miss signs or like the mental side of thing, like yeah, that doesn't it, nothing so it was else a matters. Big part of his speech, yeah. you know, the first practice seven a.m. in December over at Bell Riggers is that to all the you know freshman incoming kids that. We're going to take the bunting station just as seriously as, as all the hitting because yeah. it, it wins and loses games. So yeah. yeah, All right, for you guys personally, uh, each individually, what do you think was your favorite just individual part of that run? It could be a game, could be one moment, could be anything yeah. specific. Uh, the bus ride back from Greencastle Antrim game was just – it was so fun. I It was a really long drive because I, I don't know, it was like an hour and a half, yeah. something like that, yeah. like – it was so fun on the bus. We had because we had the the nice like coach bus mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah. I don't know that was one of my favorite moments coming home and just like we got like a police escort and everything. <gasps> yeah, so that was, was sweet. Yeah. It was just so fun. Like that was cool. Yeah, it, that was awesome. Yeah, and no, I definitely think the quarterfinals and semifinals games, the Selins yeah. Grove and Greencastle Antrim, just like I said, going on the buses. Like you know, the people that play sports they'll understand. It was just yeah. great time. Euphoric, you exactly. know. Yeah. 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 Yep. Especially after you win. Um, these guys will make fun of me for it, but <laughs> <laughs> my uh, I hit you know a home run that was probably a home run at, <laughs> at the uh, at that field, and that was probably the only <laughs> only field where it was going to go out. No one um, else did it. Yeah, yeah um, but you know, just like I said, just uh, bonding with players and you know, just developing them as yeah. uh, you know relationship and family it was just unbelievable. Yeah, so. I think. For me, probably, obviously, the rest of the day didn't go as we wanted. But the state championship day, I know, it was it was one of our it was one of our finals days. So we were kind of like in between for all the kids in school, we were like in between finals, and like all the eighth graders, and then a, a ton of kids from our school too. We've kind of like a little a pretty big hill where we get on the bus, yep. and like the whole entire eighth grade class and ton of our school oh, was cool. they were all out there. Yeah, awesome. um, so yeah. it was pretty cool. Like as we were driving away, the bus was, was pretty neat too. So, but also just like as they said, like all the bus rides, like that's something you're not gonna be able to replace. Those were so much fun. Too. Yeah. yeah. I liked, honestly, it was, you know, the game was kind of a blowout, but the first yeah. States game, it, it kind of just felt like the monkey was off the back. You know, yeah. like in 2021, I think you guys lost to Mannheim. Then there was yep. Archbishop Wood the year before. Yep. It was kind of like, you're almost on house money after that because, like, you got the state win. You're already the most successful team. And then you could kind of just, like, be like, all right, let's just, let's just play now, you yeah. know? Yeah, I definitely, I think I felt like the most, um, I guess you'd say, like, tense going into that first game. Because it was kind of like that's not like the narrative, but you know, like we we've never won a states game. That was obviously the third year in a row that we were there. So, and once we got by that, it was kind of just like we kind of just laid back and really started playing loose. And that's you yeah. know the next couple of games went went well too. But yeah, that was that was a fun one. It ended up obviously being being kind of a blowout. But I think it felt really close, at least to me, the whole entire game like even when we were up eight zero because that was a really good offensive team. So they could definitely put up runs quick. But I mean, Alex pitched another you know insane game. So. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, just because, you know, the two years prior and back back in the 2010 days where they didn't win a state game either, it's just, you know, you don't want to be that team where you lose three straight games. Um, yep. And right after that game, it just felt like a huge, huge weight off our back just because we know we could keep playing Strathaven baseball. Um, nobody expected anything else of us, so it could just go out there, have fun, and that's honestly when we yeah. played our best baseball. And obviously we wanted to set the precedent too. You know, we wanted to be the, the team to finally do it. The, yeah. the team forever to be the, the first one to win a state's game. So, yeah. So you guys were all on the team against Wood, right? Yep. Yeah. Not yeah. Mannheim though, right? You would have been freshman. Oh, you, I guess you would have got pulled up, us, right? Yeah. Playoffs, yeah. Yeah, we were freshmen. So like, how is it now that you guys have all this experience? You've been to the highest of highs and lowest of lows. I feel like for you guys on the field, that'll kind of, you know, if there's ever any tight moments, you're like, hey, like we've been here before. We've done this. And if you're playing a team with no experience, and they might not have that same mentality, yeah. you know. 
Uh, I think, you know, just because we have six guys, six out of the nine starters coming back, we have six guys who have experienced a state championship game, um, experienced a state championship run. And I think that's huge because unlike football, you know, baseball is a lot of close games, especially with teams that aren't really on your level, that there's a lot of, you know, tight games and being able to experience that, especially on that level, is going to be huge for us this year, just knowing how, how to react to that and how to, you know, take a deep breath and just refocus. Yeah, it'll keep us a lot more, like, level-headed and not get too high or get too low, especially, like, if we're going through slumps or just not playing baseball the way that Strathaven plays baseball. We will be able to pull ourselves out of it without, yeah. like, like, we know, like, it can be a lot worse. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I really don't think there's going to be too much stress at really any point. I mean, at the end of the year last year, we were the worst hitting team in the Central League, but I think it was like 50 points was for, for the average for a team. So I think obviously we've we've had a lot of lows and a lot of highs, so I think we've kind of basically experienced it all. So I think at least, you know, at, at the top, there's a lot of experience there, so I don't. it's going to be kind of just doing it over again. I don't think there will be a lot of stress, which, which definitely will give us a little bit of a leg up, yeah. Um, so obviously, sorry to bring it up, but <laughs> obviously last year the state title game ended in pretty much as big yep. of a heartbreak as you can imagine. Yep. Are you guys using that as motivation at all? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. love yeah, that. Definitely. Yeah, um, you know, it's obviously a hard experience, um, but not not many people can say that they played in the state championship game, yep. and yeah. especially us being juniors at the time, we know that hey, we have another run for this. You know, we look back. Right before we left the field, I remember looking back and saying, you know, we're going we're gonna to be back. We're going to do yes. the best that we can to be back in this game. And once we are back, you know, we're going to know how to handle that situation. Yeah. So. I mean, obviously the game, like, probably about half the game until that fifth and eight, 50% of the game was going, like, very well. You yeah, know, we were up yeah. eight to three. Like, the bats were swinging really well. They had great arms, but, you know, we were putting together good at bats. So I think, you know... Obviously, the goal this year is just finish the job. You know, kind of got halfway through that final game, but just get all the way this year. So that's that's the one goal in mind, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we talked earlier in this episode, like before the interview, about Feely just inducted in the Delco Sports Hall of yeah, Fame yeah. as a coach. Obviously, I played for him. You guys play for him. Uh, you know, very impressive for a coach as young as him to be inducted. I don't, yeah. even, I don't, don't even think he's 50 yet. I'm not positive, but... Uh, Obviously, you know, he couldn't be here today, but what do you guys have to say about just him as a coach, both on the field, as a leader, off the field, just anything you have to say about him? Oh, he loves the game. He, he, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he. I know he's told us he doesn't really teach math when he's uh, in baseball season because <laughs> he's scouting all the time. Like, I mean, he really prepares us for the games, and uh, I, I love that. It's, it, it's makes, it makes the game a lot easier when we have a coach that cares as much as him. Yeah. yeah. Um, we definitely feel less stressed playing. He's... The, one of the biggest players coach I've ever played for. You know, he'll back up your players. He'll back you up no matter what. Um, that really what, you know, makes us love playing for him. It's just, yeah. it's a fun time to be on a team that he coaches. You know, yeah. from Strathaven when I played for Wayne, it's just like, you know, he'll teach you a lot of baseball. He could be hard when he needs to, but, you know, when when times are going good, he's having fun too. Yeah. And that's honestly what we love to see. So. Yeah. I mean, he's like he's the best. Period. We we absolutely love playing with him, and just as Matt said, you know, he'll get on us. You know, when he needs to get on us, obviously we expect that. But you know, when, when we're going well and Tyler's fun, he's he's gonna have a great time and, and have a laugh with us. And it's just one of the, one of the funnest people to be around. You know, whether or not we're on the field, we're in a game, we're going to get dinner after a win or something like that. So, and just the amount of time that he puts in is is incredible. And. He has us so well prepared. I mean, you know, I, we have everything we need going into the game. So we, we feel 100% prepared. And obviously our other coaches are, are, are amazing too. So we yeah, really You know one of the coaches, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> Best BP thrower in Delaware County is Mr. Kane. I'll stand <laughs> yeah. by that. Um, now, when I think of Feely, I think of two things, transparency and uh, preparation. Because yeah. you mentioned preparation, Absolutely. like especially in the Delco League. Like he'll know who the starting pitcher is for the next like two weeks. He'll be like, oh, Cam's got Saturday, Zoom's got Tuesday. Like you never, he's never scrambling for things. Mm -hmm. And transparency, it's like if, you know, he'll be completely honest with you. He's like, you're not in the lineup because your defense wasn't good enough. You're not like, he won't BS you. He won't sugarcoat it. Like no. he'll, he'll tell you straight to your face. Like if you want to be in the lineup, like you need to get bunts down. Like, and that's very, as a player, you might not always like it, but you respect it. You're like, all right, like I might not agree with you, but you're telling me how you feel. And that's all you can ask as a coach, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right. So last season, you guys won the Central League at 14 and two. Upper Darby was up there. They lost some guys. Ridley and Marple were good. Who do you think, you know, obviously from your time seeing people training yep. and playing, like who do you think are going to be some of the good teams this year? Yep, Marple. 
Yeah, Marvel's, Marvel's definitely going to be good. Marvel's, Marvel's, gonna be, Marvel's yeah. going to be tough. They have both their arms returning. They had a pretty good offense. I think I think Garnet will have a pretty tough They always have a tough team. They play as tough. And Harrington always plays as tough. I don't know how they'll end up, but Marvel will definitely yeah. be um, one of the front runners yeah. for sure. So, no. yeah. I think there's definitely a lot of good arms in the league. Um, yeah. Springfield. <laughs> yeah, you Sean Williams from Springfield. Yep. You have Friel. Springfield guy. Let's go. Yep. Uh, Wilner from Lower Marion. Yeah, Friel mm-hmm. was great Friel last from year. There's, there's so many uh, good arms. So, yeah. it, you know. It's not necessarily about the team. It's about the guy that you're going to face. Exactly. Because yeah. a yeah. lot of the times, you know, he can shut you down. You can have zero or one run, yeah. and that can keep them in the game. So Yeah, Kurt and Mahalik both pitched well yeah. last year for Marple. So there's going to be a lot of good arms. So definitely, I mean, the days of the week that you play them are, are going to be a big deal for sure. So. Yeah, it's like in college, you know, a series kind of tells you the best team is. But if you face, like, the same, you know, good pitcher all three times you play a team, then it's like, well, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, we got to have to find a way to, uh, to figure it out. Uh, yeah, all right. Oh, I was going to say, that's like – out being a pitcher, I feel like the quality of pitching in the Central League has gone, like, since when I played in, like, 2016, like, has gone through the roof. Like, yeah. every team has a guy who's, I don't know, like, Upper 80s, 86, yeah. Yeah. like, mowing people down. It's kind of crazy. I give a cent big credit for that, too. Yeah, yeah. And just, like, all the training facilities, the training EO1 is. on deck, like, All-Star, uh, yeah. Ivy, where, where Robert Bino yeah. works. Like, I just feel like the depth, like, there's so many people playing college baseball. No matter the level, there's yeah. so many. Mm-hmm. Definitely, yeah. 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 Uh, all right, let's talk real quick about the college commitment. So, Jake, you're heading to Misericordia. Just talk us through the process there. How'd that happen? What'd you like about it and all that? Yeah. I mean, it's just like Coach Egbert up there was amazing. Like, it's it's just such a nice school up there. It's a little small town up in between Scranton and uh, Wilkes-Barre. Up, it's called Dallas, PA. Um, I mean, one of my buddies that goes to Ascent with us, he committed there a few months prior because he's a catcher. So, like, obviously they're going to get recruited first. But, um... He was telling me like how nice it is, right? I took my visit up there. I I just loved it. It was so nice, and it it helps that they win. Like I love winning. It it was a lot of fun at Strathaven playing playoff baseball. It's like this is what I want in college. So that's how I came to this World court, Series yeah. last year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, Matt, we're heading to Rowan in Jersey. Another great D three team. What'd you see uh, in that program there? Honestly, just you know, I really love the coaching staff. Um, I went to a camp there over the summer. I was blown away by you know both. You know, their facilities, their coaches, their style of play. Um, and ultimately, I wanted a big school, you know, beginning from the start of my, the, my, the start of my uh, recruiting process. It was like, I want a big school. I want to be, you know, surrounded by a lot of people. They have, you know, 15,000 students. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, I really want to be in that type of location. Um, and just like Jake said, I mean, they win, you know. They have, you know, just a good history of winning. And that's kind of what I want to involve myself in. They've had plenty of guys get drafted, right? Yeah. Like, I feel like I've seen yeah, – I remember yeah. when Luke Mutz was at Swarthmore. They faced Rowan, and I think the kid was throwing, like, 95 yeah. when, when they were facing him. Uh, D3 gets not enough not enough love. Yeah, that's, that whole conference has – like, the NJAC has crazy yeah. competition. So that's, that's going to be fun when you get up there. Yeah. Zane, we're trying to walk on at Middlebury, which yeah. is in – Connecticut? Uh, Matt, Vermont, yeah. Vermont. I knew it was somewhere up yeah, in, in yeah, the, up what I just yeah, called yeah. the skiing regions. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. I know it's somewhere cold. Yeah. Said so you've talked with the coach a little yeah. bit? Yeah, yeah. I mean, pretty much just for me, like, I, I visited a bunch of schools and kind of, I had never really felt like what everybody talks about. Like, oh, you step on the campus, like, you know, it's a place for you. Then I went up there and I really liked it. So just the campus is absolutely beautiful. It's in the mountains in Vermont. The facilities were, like, really incredible. I had never seen a D3 school that had that nice facilities. And they also have, uh, over the past, I want to say, like five years, have a really high winning percentage. So kind of same thing as we said, like, playing winning baseball is a lot of fun. We've obviously been pretty fortunate to be in a great high school program and have, have won a lot over a couple years. So definitely was looking for a winning environment. And I also, their coaching staff is, is also amazing as well. So kind of the combination of just, just everything was, yeah. Cool. All right, well, gentlemen, thank you for taking the time to come yeah. on. Is there anything Thanks you want to want to get off your chest uh, while you're here? I don't think so. I don't believe so. Yeah, thank you so a lot. much for having us. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thank All right, you good, so much for having us. Good luck this season. Yeah. Hopefully we'll see you guys back in studio at some point this yeah, year. Be great. Uh, I'm sure yeah. we'll be uh, doing more like – I think we were planning on doing like a player of the week. Yeah. And if oh, possible, yeah. try and get them cool. in, you know, yeah. stuff like oh, that. Yeah. Uh, but good luck this year. We'll be Definitely. keeping tabs, and uh, we'll see you around. Yeah, I'll see you guys. All right, thank you to Jake McDonough, Matt Kane, and Zane Malarkey for joining the program, talking about the Strathaven season from last year, what to expect going forward in 2024. Uh, you know, as a Strathaven alum, it you know it was very cool to be able to follow this team the whole way last year, and uh, you know, pretend to be unbiased for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> you know, I always say like if they're playing another Delco team, obviously I'm not just going to be sitting there with yeah, my pom poms yeah. out and rooting, but like once it gets to the point where they're playing, you know, teams from like 
uh, uh, other parts of Pennsylvania. Yeah, once I hit districts, it was like, all right, well. Yeah, they're playing Phoenixville, yeah, like Ruston. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And would, it would be the same for anything. Yeah, um, 100%. But, you know, it was, uh, it was good to get to talk to them. You know, I really like their mentality. You know, a lot of teams could have a heartbreaking loss like that and just kind of let it spiral and be like, like that was our shot. Like we had it there. Like you know all that. But like, no, I assume they've taken it like very well. And yeah, really just using it to. I think it's going to be another big year for them. Yeah, they seem to be motivated. You got Luke D'Ancona going into his junior year, committed to Boston College, ready to really take that next step into that you know range of elite pitchers in the Central League because he was good last year. Don't get me wrong, but he's got two more years left, mm-hmm. and I, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see uh, what he brings to the table. All right, let's move on to our Phillies talk here. Uh, so, unfortunately, we had to say goodbye to Reese Hoskins. He signed with the Milwaukee Brewers, and I think I texted it to you. I'm just glad it wasn't a rival. Yeah, yeah, no. I th- like, and uh, it's a really good fit there in Milwaukee. I feel like that's a good, like, really good move for them. I think it's a good move for him. He's going to play every day first base, and it's just, I don't know, it's one of those things where it, oh, it was never, like, a bad breakup. It's just, no. it's just way, business. Yeah, yeah, the way things went, it just didn't. Like at the here. end of the day, as much as you love Reese, like you have to do what makes Bryce Harper happy. He's the face of the franchise. Yeah. He's here for a decade. And if him, you know, transitioning to first base full time was what was going to take for him to have as long of a career as we would like him yeah. to, then, you know, it is what it is that we kind of just have to say, listen, Reese, I'm sorry. We love you, but there's just not a real fit yeah. for you here. And I like the Brewers for this fit because good pitching team, good defense. They have no thump in their lineup. Man. He's probably gonna hit cleanup. No, they do, yeah. yeah like he's do. probably, you know, is he? I don't know if he's their best hitter right away, but like <laughs> he might be top two. He's probably their, he's their power. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Least, yeah. yeah, I feel like we could be missing someone very obvious. I mean, Yelich hasn't really been the yeah, same. No. Like he looks better, but he hasn't been like the MVP Yelich yeah, kind of guy. Yelich but like, there, I feel like, you know, Willie like, Adamas went and had like a decent, exactly like it's like it's not stars. Yeah, they don't they don't have a dude where. It's like, all right, like you cannot make a mistake to him. And I think now they have that with, well, I guess Yelich. But, like, yeah. I, I think with Reese, like, he can, I don't know, he's going to be able to punish some people. I also think uh, a little less intense fan base could be good for him, especially coming off an injury. Like, he's yeah, not going to be yeah. getting booed off the field in Milwaukee if he struggles. You know, like, yeah. like if he comes out of the gate slow. Uh, he also has an opt-out after one year. So if he realizes that, you know, he – was you know outplaying his his contract Mm -hmm. then he can sign or if the brewers because i think brandon woodruff's out for this year like if they struggle and he tells them like hey like after this year i'm gonna opt out he could get traded to a contender at the deadline aren't woodruff and burns out this year did burns get tj i think i'm gonna look at i think just woodruff i think i think uh what because burns Burns fine the playoffs i think he's all right let's see live injury updates here Oh, uh, no, I think. Is he good? I think he's all right. All right, cool. That's good. Yeah, I think I think he's all right. Uh, but but Woodruff's gonna be out, and there's a chance the Brewers just aren't like a true threat. The Cubs are getting better. The Reds are getting better. You know, the Cardinals are at least trying. Like I just I still though look at that Brewers team. I don't think there's anyone that's still better than them. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, the Cubs will compete. I think the Cardinals will be better this year. Who knows what the Cubs Pirates lost are. Marcus Stroman too. Oh uh, yeah. Who so, knows yeah. what the Pirates are gonna do? <laughs> so. Half my group chat of, of Penn State Club <laughs> baseball's Pirates fans, and they hold on to any glimmer of hope they can get. I mean, you know. I think about what we were doing when the Phillies. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not I mean? criticizing <laughs> them. It's just it's true. Yeah, like, yeah. They're watching yeah. their process era, but yeah, the problem is yeah. their process era has been since like 2014, mm. 2015, whatever. Also, hasn't really been much of a process. It's yeah. been like O'Neill Cruz. Now, I mean, yeah. they got Cruz, Reynolds will be good. Like. Yeah. Get a little pitching. You got a shot. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we're going to just real quick uh, give a, a little tribute to Reese, some of our favorite moments of his time in Philadelphia. Uh, he had one of the best starts to a career ever. Yeah. He hit, I, I want to say it was 18 home runs in 34 games. It just felt like every night, and it was the same thing. It was to left field. It was a line drive to left field mm-hmm. every single time. And what he did was he really just brought some glimmer of light <laughs> to a such a dark era of Phillies teams where, like, going into that. I guess it was 2018 season. It was like, well, we might suck, but like we might have a star here. You know, yeah. someone that will actually put fans in the seats that we think could be a part of the next core. Yeah, it was. I was the first time in a while where we had a guy where I was like, oh, like he's going to be good. And you know, we had like guys who were good to average or like older. A lot of like younger guys because we at that point we had just kind of like emptied out our farm system for the kind of earlier two 2010s teams. And I don't know, he was like the first guy since then that was like, oh, like potential to be like a star. Like a homegrown yeah. guy. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, obviously the bat spike. Like yep. when, when people think of Reese Hoskins' time in Philadelphia, it'll be the bat spike because that was just, you know, the moment. Like they, it was the first home playoff game in 11 years. It was, you know, they had already scored a run in the inning, but like the place was just waiting for something to just like explode. First pitch, no doubter off the bat. Mm-hmm. He said he didn't even know he did the spike until like a couple innings later. He's like, I just blacked out. <laughs> like, I, I don't even remember what you're talking about. But like, I mean, you saw every like Philly sports outlet when they announced that he left. Like that was the video yeah. they played. And I'm pretty sure he was like one for 20 going into that game in the playoffs so far. He did nothing against mm-hmm. the Cardinals or the early Braves series. That was such an iconic, like just such an iconic moment, I feel like. That was like the, you know, we're here to play. Like yeah. the I thought they were going to beat the Cardinals. I didn't think they were going to beat the Braves. No. Once they snuck that first game out, this was like the first time where I'm like, oh, like they might actually might yeah. actually do this. We got you some know? here. Yeah, and, and he had a great playoff run. I mean, that, you know, that whole time, like he carried them against the Padres along with Bryce. I mm-hmm. mean, there was the game where they were, they were up in the series and he had two home runs against the Padres to like send it to game five. And then in game five, he hit the homer before Bryce hit the bed yeah. with the bank one. So, yeah, those. you know, I mean, nobody really hit in the World Series. So that's nah. outside of the one game where they hit five home runs. Yeah. You know, everybody kind of cooled down a little bit. Um, also, I always will remember the the super slow home run trot against the Mets where he took like 35 seconds because someone threw like up and in, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he took his grand old time. And, and I'm pretty sure the Mets pitcher after he's like, yeah, what are you going to do? Like yeah. he, you know. He got me. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, I don't know. That's kind of a cool way to react to it. Just like, yeah, no, that's, that's what It's happens. better than whining about it, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, when he wore the double C flap, when he had the broken jaw. I remember that. Oh, I'm going to pull this that up. And, and editor's note, I'm going to put this in so anyone can see it. Uh, it was just so funny that I'm pretty sure he had broken something in his jaw on, like, the not, you know, like, front side. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's sick. It looks like a football helmet. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm guessing he like broke his. Yeah, he broke his jaw, and he just looked hysterical wearing that. Imagine if all switch hitters wore that. Gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, uh, he was also, also very good off the field. He was big in the community. Yeah. Him and his wife Jamie seemed like they really cared about making an impact here. And I think that's something that you know the community is going to miss his his presence. You know, the big yeah. fellow, the smile on yeah, his face. Yeah, like yeah. he was just obviously. You know, what do we know? We have never met him, but it just seems like a good dude. Yeah, definitely. That, oh, that seemed to be the sentiment. Also, that, that when his wife was buying all the beers for people, it was yeah. so cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like, you know, it's one of those, like, like you mentioned, it's, it's a tough breakup. You know, both sides will probably be better off for it in the end, and I, I just yeah. hope Reese ends up, like, I wanted him to go to an AL contender. That was the that was the hope. But, um, yeah. all right, groundbreaking news here. The Phillies have signed Colby Allard. Woo! 9-24 and 24 with a 6.1 ERA. Uh <laughs> I guess it's kind of more just like rotation. He's kind of like the Bailey Falter, right? Like the if someone gets hurt, like we need someone that can actually pitch like five or six innings. It doesn't yeah. matter how good it is, but you know, uh, I think that this is like an organization depth signing. Yeah. If you've ever seen one, it's this. Um, this wouldn't be put in if we didn't have nothing else to talk about. Yeah. yeah so that's. Uh, but we got someone. He's from the. Hey, he's not on the Braves anymore. Was he on the? I thought it was on the Rangers. Oh, uh, I think it was. I think it was both. Oh, uh, was he Rangers and Braves? Yeah, yeah. It was always just another back to my when when I played MLB the Show franchises. Yep. He was always the first dude out of the bullpen for the Rangers for like two years. Sure. Uh, well, speaking of the Rangers, we're going to switch over to the MLB talk. We're going to talk about the Hall of Fame because the Hall of Fame ballots were announced. Adrian Beltre, ninety-five point one percent. He is a Hall of Famer. Four hundred seventy-six home runs. Don't believe he ever won a World Series. But um, he was a Dodger, a Mariner, a Red Sox, and a Ranger. Would he have with the Red Sox? I don't think he was on. Was I don't, he wasn't there very very long. I don't it think so. Been it would have had to been the Red Sox. I don't, I don't think he was. He was on the Red Sox only in 2010, so uh, no. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's uh, true. And it's funny. As good of a baseball player as he was, I will mostly remember him for not – letting people touch his head <laughs> he hated when people would touch his head he was such a character and it was though. so he was funny awesome yeah he just like and everybody like i think elvis andrews would do and he'd like throw his glove at him <laughs> and you know you could tell like, he wasn't messing around like, he was actually no, pissed yeah. off that they would do that um but i i'm i think he would go in as a ranger he might just go mlb logo like roy halliday just like you know, going yeah, without a team just because he played for so many different yeah. teams i feel like that was the his like biggest i feel like when he was most notable was the rangers mm-hmm. um just because that was also probably the most competitive team he was on that's yeah that's what um, i was thinking but, too yeah 
Uh, Todd Helton, Hall of Famer, 79.7%. He had 369 career home runs. One of the rare guys, we don't see it too often anymore, only played for one team, Colorado Rockies, for his entire career. Well-deserved. Uh, as a former MLB The Show GM of the Rockies, what do you have to say about, about Todd Helton? <laughs> nah, I love Todd Helton. That was, he was a guy that, like, my dad used to go do business trips to Colorado sometimes. And so when I was young, like he came back with like a Todd Helton jersey, I was like, who is this dude? And then you kind of go and find out. I think he was in like a backyard baseball. Like you just find out how good he was. So it was a guy like kind of rooted for throughout his career just because I got a jersey when I was like seven. Yeah. But um, I'm really happy to see him in because he was just another guy who was so good for so long. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad consistency is getting some love here. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah he's just sure. like a very, very good player for a very long time. And, you know, he went through the storm because the Rockies were not good for the majority of his career, and, and he stuck it out, made a World Series when they lost to the Red Sox. Uh, another guy that we have on here that played his whole career with one team is Joe Maurer, barely sneaking in, 76.1%. He was the MVP of the American League in 2009, career 306 hitter for a catcher, and also just a great defensive catcher as well. Oh, yeah, dude, he was... I don't know. He was kind of like that premier guy. If you looked at the catchers, like he was the dude for so long. And yeah, he was the dude of that era. And then I think Buster Posey kind of like yeah, took yeah. it from him. And then, you know, like Yachty is like, I feel like if you talk to any young catcher, that was like Molina was probably who they like mm-hmm. aspired to be. And, you know, not to get too sidetracked here, but I think you saw how bad the Cardinals pitching staff was this year. Yeah. Like it, it, it makes a difference. But Joe Maurer, well-deserved. Uh, we'll talk real quickly about our Phillies guys. None of them really had great turnouts on the ballot. Chase Utley led the way at 28.8. It was his first year. Jimmy Rollins at 14.8. It was his first year. Bobby Abreu, uh, it was not his first year. I don't know what year it was. He's probably like two or three yeah. now. But, um, um, actually, I think I was looking at him. He was also 14.8%. And we've said it on the show before. Uh, I don't think it's any secret. Like, I love. You oh, know, geez. Bobby Abreu is in his sixth year. When he re- I don't even know when, when, when he retired, yeah. but, you know, I, I've said it before. Like, I love Utley. I love Rollins. Abreu was a little before our time of, like, being a diehard fan. But, like, if they get in, I would be so happy for them. But if they don't, I won't be like, they got robbed. Yeah. You know, like, they have very solid cases. No one will ever wear 26 or 11 again for mm-hmm. the Phillies. But, like, you know, I, I would I would place them just outside. I think. Yeah. It's like, I really, I don't know, having watched them and, you go back and look at the stats too. Like I think they both they're kind of on that fringe thing where if and both of them had good, especially Chase Utley with twenty eight eight in his first um, his first year on the ballot. I think if like the momentum or like the narrative goes their way, they're gonna have a lot. They're gonna have a good like a or at least at least an okay chance of getting in. Probably later, you know, a couple years down the road. All right, so you made this list here. You want to tell us about some of the 2025 guys that were making their uh, ballot debut? Yeah, there was um, – so I guess this kind of came out with, like, potential ballot guys. Um, we really had, I don't know, like, was it six guys who we really think should be on there? Um, we have Ichiro, who I think – First ballot. Yeah, easy first ballot. He might ballot. not – He, I would probably guess somewhere in the – low to mid-90s percentage because yeah, yeah. they just never do unanimous. Like, they, were, so they were questioning whether Icho would be unanimous or not. I think he should. I don't, I, I don't I know if he so will. It's just baseball writers, and this is funny saying this when we are both baseball writers, <laughs> but baseball writers are so full of themselves oh that they God. just want to be the story. Like, people post ballots just for attention. Yeah. Like, a blank ballot, like, give me a... Come on, bro. Give me, give me a break. That's Icho. So do they, for the Baseball Hall of Fame, do they count your stats like when he played in japan i don't think so no. but i think it'll just like be a part of his legacy yeah. you know okay kind of like what probably when shohei goes mm. to do all that like it'll, his yeah. japanese legacy yeah. okay um but so also on that list we have cc who probably should i think um yeah. sathy's a, a star pitcher i just i will only remember him from victorino hitting a grand oh, yeah. slam yeah. off him yes. like that's just my my selfish thing of course he beat us in the world series the next year but you know it's but just we like, got that moment yeah yeah hey, we we won so it's all that matters but yeah no great pitcher uh I he have you seen what he looks like these days? He's lost so much. Yeah, weight. he looks, he looks that was he, he almost died. I think. Well, yeah, he had um well uh, not to dampen the mood, but he, he had like an alcohol problem. Yeah. So I think he went to rehab and got like once he got clean, like he's looked great. Hey, it's only dampening the mood if he still has the problem. That's a good point. He you know, no longer has. We're, the problem, we're talking so, about yeah, uh, yeah. You he's know, he's clean. He's doing great. Story. Like yeah. very happy and should be a hall of famer. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we got. Pedroia or Dustin Pedroia, Ian Kinsler, who I think are kind of in the same boat as Rollins and Ali. Yeah, yeah. Pedroia maybe a little bit more, just because I, I feel like he has like a little bit more name recognition. Mm-hmm. I don't. 
I was saying I'm, gonna, I don't, I'm not sure either of them will or should make it. I, I think Pedroia, I mean, I loved watching him play. He was just like a feisty guy. Like he was, you know, career about 299 hitter, but like he didn't even have 2,000 hits. Like home runs, 140. Like I think he's another like four-time All-Star MVP. You know, I think the gold gloves, he's got a very good – very good case. I just, I just yeah. don't think pull that up, it's so quite pull good up enough. Utley's stats as well, just to compare them. Yeah, he I, I want to see what. Yeah, because I was saying before. I'll, I'll be honest. I was, I was saying before we started recording this. I thought Chase Utley is a better second baseman than Pedro. I mean, still. Utley's got a couple more All Stars, Silver Sluggers, about 120 more home runs. Yeah, I would probably say Utley would have a better shot than yeah. Pedro. I think it's power hitting second baseman in that. Yeah, it's very rare. Very rare. Uh, I already put that, I put that <laughs> in the the one episode that we uh, that we talked about that already. But uh, yeah, uh, we also got. I think King Felix has a very good case too. He, I mean, so. his having the like having being as good because he he was like the first dude to win a Cy Young when he had like a five hundred record. Like he had that. He had the perfect game. It kind of sucks because he played for the Mariners, who were just so irrelevant for so long and just never really got a chance to pitch in like the big yeah. stage. But uh, he was unbelievable for. Dude, a really not only were time. the Mariners bad, he was pitching when he was 19 years old because that's how <laughs> bad they were. Just because they need, like, he was the best option they had. Uh, Six time All Star, career 3.42 ERA. He won a Cy Young. He came in second in two Cy Youngs, so very yeah. close to potentially having having three. Perfect game was awesome. I mean, just having a 19-5 and five record as a Seattle Mariner should get you in the Hall of Fame alone. But, like, that peak, I mean, in between 2009 and 2014, his ERAs were 249, 227, 347, 306, 304, and then 214. Yeah. I don't know how he lost the, the Cy Young when his ERA was 2.14. Um, I'm looking that up now because I don't know who would have been better in that, the, let's was see. That Verland- was Corey, that Verlander? Oh, oh, it was year, Kluber. Oh, uh, I was going to say, it was either that or the year Verlander won MVP, too. I still think he should have got that over Kluber. It's it's the it's the wins. Kluber threw uh, how many, how many like innings? Like 10 more innings. That's oh, not bad, yeah. That's not bad. Anyway. Um, that was on that Felix thing. Like, do you see the amount of, like, 200-plus innings seasons he had? Like, Yeah, just consistent. Yeah, yeah I'd, be, uh, I'd be fine with him. Uh, last guy that we think has a shot is Troy Tulowitzki. He's another one of the – I just don't know if his – like career went on long enough. Like yeah. if you know, if he had more years of that Rockies production, maybe. But once he got to the Blue Jays, like I think injuries kind of just took a toll on him yeah, and caught you up know, him a little bit. Uh, I'll pull up his numbers as well. But I think he was just another one of those guys that like, like it's kind of in a way similar to Utley, where like he had a really high peak, like two hundred twenty five mm-hmm. homers, career eight fifty six OPS, are very good, two ninety batting average. Let's see, we got five All Stars, two Gold Gloves, two Silver Sluggers, incredible career not maybe not quite you know hall of fame worthy if you never finished higher than fourth in mvp voting yeah. you know like that's just like a was he one of the better players of the era absolutely was he the one of the best i'm not yeah. sure you know i'm not sure he's like a you know you you could it sounds harsh to say like but like you can tell the the story of baseball without him you know yeah, and that's 100%. like a messed up way to look at it but it's uh i think it's i think it's fair what do you think yeah no nah, that's definitely fair yeah All right, well, now that we got all that covered, I believe that will uh, bring an end to our episode for today. Once again, thank you for tuning in. Make sure to check out uh, the link on our website. So I'll have the store attached to the website. So on the website, you'll be able to go up. There'll be a tab that says store, and you click on it. That'll direct you to the other website. And uh, it'll also be in our link tree, you know, with yeah. the rest of our uh, our YouTube. Make sure, like, and subscribe. Uh, shout out producer Rob for coming on this uh, this journey with us here. And uh, next week, not to uh, spoil anything, we'll have another high school interview. So uh, nice. I'm going to keep people on the edge of their seat there. But as always, thank you for listening, and we will see you then.